So today I'm going to show you a few knots that are useful uh, for outdoor activities or for any day-to-day -day activities where you might need knots. Uh, we'll start with the most basic knot, uh, which is an overhand knot. It's the granny knot. Everyone's familiar with that. Just take it around like that and make a knot. It's used as a stopper knot, but um, there's a better version, which is the figure eight. You make the granny knot, but instead of putting it through there, you rotate it once more and you make a figure eight. Figure eights are really great as stopper knots um, in rope work, etc. For instance, if you're abseiling down a, down a mountain and you don't want to abseil off the end of your rope, let's assume that your rope's too short for the abseil, then um, you put a stopper knot in as a safety precaution. It'll stop you at least at the end of your rope. You'll have problems anyway because you're going to be dangling from the end of a rope, but at least you wouldn't have fallen all the way. So that's the figure eight. There are other versions of the figure eight. Um, you can tie, tie a figure eight, figure eight sorry, off a bite. A bite is a bend in the rope, just like this, okay? We have the two ends, we have the working end of the rope and the standing end, okay? And a bite, a bend in the rope. Then the bite actually doubles up and acts almost like the end of the rope. And to tie a figure eight, you do the same thing. You make as if you're going to tie a granny knot. You go around once more and you make a figure eight. You can dress the knot nicely to make it or even and then you have a figure eight on a bite okay figure eight on a bite is a very very popular knot because um, it's a very strong knot and it's used for climbing um, climbers will attach this to a carabiner and onto their harness or they'll sometimes attach it directly but um, best to use a carabiner and um, they'll use that as their safety knot um, you can also it's good to have a long tail on the end of a knot like this and you can also tie off couple of turns and feed that feet through the back of them like that to kind of form a it's the same knot as you'd use for a fisherman's knot and then it's just a good way to protect your knot and prevent it from unraveling. Okay so that's a figure eight on a bite. You can also make this figure eight by following through. One of the ways to do that is to take your rope, leave something leave enough space so you can work with it. And then make a figure eight knot, okay, around once more than a granny knot. There you have your figure eight, okay. Give yourself a little bit of room to work with. You put it around whatever object you want to tie it to. And then you take your knot, your rope, and you feed it and you follow this loop all the way with your with your rope. Okay? So you're following it, following the rope, following the rope around, okay, you're following your rope, the rope around again. Keep on following it around and finally through. And there you have your nice figure eight tied onto an object. Okay, and you can once again tie off a, a half knot like that, really, not just to tie it off. Um, some of the other knots that are very useful are the bowlins. Um, bowlins are great, great knots to use. Um, it's used very much in the marine. Um, and maybe industry um, because it's a very useful knot uh, which doesn't slide it makes a nice loop that doesn't slide so first of all let's just make a plain um, sliding noose knot okay that's a loop that does slide okay and let's say you want an application where you don't want the knot to slide like that then what you do is you put your rope around it, a branch or whatever and you bend the rope like this into a circle Okay, and then you take the leading end of the rope, or working end of the rope, you pass it through the bottom of the circle, and they often talk about this as being a rabbit coming out of the hole, and then you go around the tree, so around the back end of the rope, and then back into the hole. Okay, and then you pull that all tight, dress the knot, as they say, and what you end up with is a bowlin. Okay, so that's a bowlin. Bowlins are very, very useful um, for a number of reasons. You can use them to tie um, the rope to, to an object, but you can also use it, um, you can tie the bowlin and, and actually use it to throw, to moor a boat. So if you were mooring a boat, you already have the bowlin tied like this. You have a bigger loop, of course. Okay, there's your bowlin. And let's just say this was a stump you're gonna moor your boat onto. You just throw it over and your boat is moored. Okay, that's just one of many this is for the, for the bowling. The bowling can be tied very quickly if you want to 
and the way to do that is to use the leading end or working end to help tie the knot. So instead of forming the circle like this, what I do is I just form the circle with the leading end, pull it through, and there it goes. So it's a very, very quick motion. Take the leading end, push it, fold it over, and feed it through. Okay, so you can do this very, very quickly, obviously. So it's a very quick movement. Of course, you can practice it and do it much faster. Okay, so that's the, the bowlin. Um, you can also have a bowlin. If you want a moving noose, you can tie a bowlin over, um, over a rope. So you can just do a normal bowlin, you flick it over the rope, um, pass it through and around through. So it's a kind of a moving bowlin. Here we go, you've got the bowline tied and it's moving like a, a noose. Okay, so there are many different applications for the bowline. One of my favorite knots, um, which I use for a number of reasons, uh, is called the Alpine Butterfly. It's a knot that can be used for pulling um, from three different directions. It's a very strong knot for that. And also for shortening a rope. What you do is you make a loop and then you make a second loop and then you pass the loop down through the between the two strands and then you pull it through the middle okay and that's the alpine butterfly the alpine butterfly like i said if you make this loop really big you can shorten the rope uh, by a fair amount it's very good because you can put it evenly from both directions and very tightly and the knot's going to not going to tie up very easily it's actually going to be able to undo quite straight uh, quite easily one way to remember how to do this knot is to think of it as being a stick man. So you have the two ends here. You turn, you make one loop and two loops. Okay. The top loop is, is the stick man's head. The middle loop is his torso. And the bottom is his legs. Okay. These two leading ends here. Okay. So he takes his head, he puts it between his legs. Okay. And he brings his head right around through and right through the middle of his torso. And there you have the alpine butterfly. It's a very, very useful knot and it has a lot of applications in climbing and rope setups, uh, forming anchors and various other applications. Um, one of the more common knots that are used um, are uh, what we call clove hitches. It's a kind of a friction knot. This, this is made by making one loop like that and another loop in the opposite direction and feeding them behind one behind the other. And then you put that over whatever object you want to tie onto and you pull it tight and what it does is it creates a friction knot so as long as you keep pulling in that direction it's not going to come undone okay and it's a very very good knot to have because you can easily undo it um, you could tie a rope to a tree or, or, or whatever else you want to do so it's a good friction knot to use and um, it's definitely got a lot of applications if you're building a raft this would be a good knot to use. So that's, once again, we go over that. What you do is, you make one loop, then you twist another loop in the opposite direction, you feed the one loop behind the other loop, throw it over, pull tight, and then there you have it. And as long as you're pulling in that direction, it's a good friction knot, it's not gonna come undone. Okay. There are other ways to tie this knot. You can also tie this knot directly onto a limb in this way. Take the, the, the rope, okay, you give yourself enough, enough room to play with, and you, you cross it like that, bring it round, and pass it through. Okay. And there you have it again. You've, you've got another um, clove hitch. Okay, very, very useful knot, friction knot for various uh, reasons. Um, there are plenty of other knots that you can use, but these are some of the more common knots. Um, I'll probably do some videos later on about uh, uses for other knots, and I'm going to do perhaps a tree climbing knot video as well, uh, for climbing with uh, climbing trees using rope work that typical tree arborists, but arborists would, or tree climbing arborists would use. Thank you.
Okay, so um, a lot of times when people are doing things, they want to shorten the rope um, to just temporarily, just to be able to do something. And there are a number of ways you can do it. I've already spoken about an alpine butterfly, which I'll do again. So you make one loop and another loop like that, pass it through like that and make your, your um, alpine butterfly. That's one way to shorten a rope. You can make this loop very big and obviously shorten the length of the rope. It's not going to move anywhere and you can easily untie it. Another way is um, to fold the rope in two like this. Have these two bites or bends in the rope. Okay. At the one end, twist the rope and put it over that end. Okay, and you pull that tight. Okay, and you hold the tension there. And you do the same thing. Twist the rope, put it over the end, and pull it tight. So you have that. Okay, that's called a sheep shank. As long as you've got tension on the rope, it's not going to come undone. If you release tension, it comes undone immediately. You can also make that a more permanent knot to avoid it from coming undone. So you do the same thing. You twist the rope over each bite. But instead of just leaving it like that on the bite, you feed the end through the bite. Okay, same thing on the other side. You have your, your bite, you twist the rope over, over the end, and then you feed the rope through that. Okay, there you have the sheep shank, but it's tied off so that you can't, uh, it won't come undone, even if you release the tension. Okay, so it's a temporary way to, to just shorten a rope. Okay. I'm going to undo that. Um, talking about shortening ropes, you also might want to shorten a rope so you can store it. Okay. One way to do that is you can double the rope up. Okay. So let's just say this is my length of rope and I'm doubling it up. And then you can daisy chain it. The daisy chain works this way. Just take the, the end and you form, you form a loop like that and then you pass a bite through it. Okay. So that you, you get that. Then you, form, then you pass the bite again through that loop and you pull it tight and then you just keep on feeding another bite in passing it through okay just keep on feeding it through and keep on feeding it through it's called the, it's called the daisy chain and you just pull it tighter if you want to make it work properly you keep on just feeding it through on itself like this and what you end up with finally you take the whole piece in through okay now it's, it's sturdy, it's easy to store, it's a shortened piece of the rope, but if you want to get it undone, it's very quick to undo, just pull this end and then you just pull it through like this. And there you have it, um, the rope's available, very quickly available. Some people use this when they're making uh, belts, when it's just temporary belts, and they want to have cordage with them, they'll make a daisy chain in order to make a belt, which they can use in an emergency and very quickly. Thank you.